So you attended a Scrum Master interview and you are asked to interpret a velocity chart. So before you even know where to interpret a velocity chart, they are asking you to walk them through how you can interpret a velocity chart. Welcome back to Aisha Tech. I'm very happy to have you all join my platform. For my current subscribers and my new subscribers, I welcome you all to the channel. Thank you all so much for subscribing to this channel. I really, really appreciate it. And if my content have been so valuable to you, kindly like, share, comment. Thank you for subscribing. So on today's video, we're going to be talking about how to interpret a velocity chart for a Scrum Master interview. And we're going to be focused on Jira on this interview. So let's assume that you went to an interview and the interviewer gave you a Jira board and asked you to walk them, walk them through how you will interpret a velocity chart. And if I'm given this in an interview, so first I'm going to go on that report and populate my velocity chart, right? You go under the re uh, report and I click on velocity reports because they are asking me for velocity reports, right? The last time we did burn down chart and if you missed my burn down chart on how you can answer that in the interview, go back and watch that burn down chart video because that also will help you so much on how you can answer this in the interview, right? So now we select velocity report and populate that team's velocity, right? So in the first thing you have to do when you are given this is uh, always not to be so concerned about the team dynamic, asking about, okay, who is these people in the team? Who is there? And where, uh, where for how long they've been working together? And all those things, we are not asking all those questions. Instead, we're just going to walk them through how we can interpret a velocity chart and come up with different assumptions, maybe, or different scenarios that might be happening with this current team. So after I populate my velocity chart, I will basically go basic, and I like to go basic so they will know that I actually do understand the whole flow of a velocity chart. So for you all there to know, uh, the y-axis always going to have the story points if the team is using story points, right? It shows us on this part. But if they're using hours too, the hours is going to show on that side. But this team is actually using story points. Just by me looking at that, I can tell that this team are estimating in story points, right? And at the bottom, it gives you the sprint, the sprint you have in this project, right? And we can count, we can see so far how many sprints is this populating, right? Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's showing us basically seven sprints. And when you're looking at this, at this view, it will be difficult to know the sprint length, right? But one way you can do it if, the, if you are allowed is to scroll down. So when you, when you scroll down, you basically cannot even see the sprint length. It just gives you the sprint name, right? But if you're asked to show just the velocity, don't go back and start looking at sprint reports or burn down chart to start worrying about those little, little things that you are not asked of. Only focus on what you are asked for. And in this case, it's about velocity, right? So the next thing I will do is to also talk about the colors I have in my board. I'm like, okay, looking at this velocity chart, uh, this team basically have worked for a couple of weeks together, I would say for sure, based on the multiple sprints I see in this velocity. And also at the top of the velocity, we have the gray bar, which shows the work committed at the beginning of the sprint. And the gray, which also show the green, the green, which also shows work that was done at the end of the sprint. Looking at this velocity chart, I can definitely give uh, an assumption to say that this team, they fluctuate in their velocity. Um, looking at this in the first sprint, the sprint 28, they planned for the same amount of work and completed the same amount for, of the work. And in sprint 29, Jira basically did not populate the committed work. Uh, I know sometimes this happens due to when the team started outside of the sprint time, and it did not show in this case for this particular team. And that's exactly what happened <laughs> due to the night, because night, we run this at night, and the night time, uh, sometimes it won't populate it due to the Jira way of calculating their time on this board. 
And but at the end, it definitely showed us what was completed. Here it's saying zero, but the team actually committed to close to this uh, work that was completed. And it's just marking it zero. But, and sometimes when you look at this in the burn down charts, if this happened, it's just gonna show like false scope change, but it's actually, it's not. It's just showing that this, this story points were started to calculate it after the sprint was already started. So that's for that. And the team, their delivery fluctuates. Uh, sometimes they plan for work, they complete all their work, and sometimes they plan for the work and they complete half of it. And sometimes it's very difficult to even tell if they're even completing all what they planned for due to me unable to see the full commitment in this velocity chart. And looking at this velocity chart, I can definitely tell that this team is an immature team. They're going to need a lot of support. And if I'm given the opportunity to be the Scrum Master for this team, I'll first of all have to connect with the team and look at their overall ways of working. By me doing this, I can be able to understand what are the reasons why they have all this fluctuation. Is one of the reasons might be maybe they have team dynamic change. Maybe they have high turnover. Maybe we have a lot of people going on vacation or we have people that are sick or in maternity leave, which will also affect the scope. Or maybe the scope of the project constantly change. All of these reasons can be why, can be a reason why the velocity is just keep fluctuating. And maybe too, the team do not know how to estimate. And by the way, if this context has been valuable to you, follow Aisha Tech in all social media platforms. I really would appreciate it. And by the way, I really want to start doing TikTok live videos and follow Aisha Tech on TikTok and Instagram because I'm going to start going live and do a lot of interview live questions for free. In order for me to do that, I need more followers to go live online on TikTok and Instagram. So follow Aisha Tech. It's Aisha Techs on TikTok and Instagram so that I'm going to go live so we can able to all connect and further discuss all about Scrum Master interview and metrics and all of that. And if you're interested in mentorship, do not hesitate to email me at admin at aishascrumtech.com and also like, share, and comment. Comment Velocity if this has been valuable to you. And if you comment Velocity, this will help me know that you actually watch this video and it's also valuable to you. And I can do more metrics video for you all. All right, so those are the different assumptions can happen in case of this particular Velocity. And now let's assume that they tell you that, okay, this particular team, uh, they were new to Agile. They were new to Agile, so is it normal for their velocity charts to look this way? So what would you say? It's actually normal, right? So it's not abnormal for teams' velocity to fluctuate when they are pretty, pretty new into doing Agile. Because why is that? Because they are experimenting things, right? They have to go through the four stages of the Tuckman model, right? They have storming, forming, storming, numbing, and later on, hopefully they'll get to performing and then adjourning, right? So in order for them to go through all those phases, they learn different things about the team. They learn about their working, working warm. They have in trainings, mentorship. They also learn in how to work in the agile space. So for such team, their data will definitely fluctuate. And if I'm the scrum master for this team, I'm not going to be too concerned about it. I'll be worried if I have this right here, what's happening in Spring 28, whereby the team will plan for the same amount of work and end with the same amount of work. That might be a little manipulation. <laughs> so no, that's abnormal, right? It's definitely abnormal to have your team whereby every single sprint, they plan for the same amount of work and end with the same amount of work. As a Scrum Master, that will tell me that, oh, this team is either manipulating their estimates or they do not understand estimation or they basically are not pushing themselves, but it's abnormal for each sprint to look the same. Because the goal is for the team to continuously learn, improve and grow. And they can only improve their velocity if they can work and learn 
above their normal norm, right? So that's that. And let's say now you are asked to calculate the average velocity, right? And to calculate the average velocity, before I even show you that, let's come up here. Jira also do such a wonderful job in like giving like notes, reading, like just for like newbies, so people can able to further understand all what this chart is all about. And by the way, if this has been valuable, if you have not yet like and subscribe, kindly like and subscribe to this big channel. I really, really will appreciate it, you know. So it's you come here, you say how to read this report. So if you click on this how to, Jira have a lot of how to. If you select on this how to, you are able to, it's gonna give you, it's gonna give you like simple definition of the reports. Like for example, he has what is velocity, right? It has like a simple definition of velocity. Your team's velocity is calculated by taking the average of the total completed estimates from their last few sprints. So Jira is how Jira actually here is it's defining what is average velocity, right? It's defining what is average velocity, meaning that you look back at past few sprints and then you calculate you calculate that was completed in this case is the one, then you are able to now get the team's average velocity. So you're now asking how to read this data, right? How to read this um, colors and this graph, right? So it started with the gray, which is the committed column, the gray. The gray is the total estimate of each sprint issue when the sprint began. So the gray bar only calculates, only calculates what was there during the beginning of the sprint. This is very important because sometimes one time I had a, a, one of my mentees was like, oh, Aisha, I don't understand why our committed remain the same. Committed right here. Commitment remain the same despite we having to add it a lot of stories after the sprint have started. So my answer was the story you started with, the stories you started with right here during sprint planning, when the Scrum Master hit starts. Only those story points that were started with, we show here as committed. And it's very important for you to know this as a Scrum Master. So the committed will only capture, I'm repeating this again. So the committed will only capture story points that was there, or maybe hours if you're using hours or ideal days if you're using days. It will only capture what was there during the beginning of sprint planning, the story that you hit start with. Let's say you have one of your team member and they were on the, the team was unable to estimate that story. And you, the scrum master, you already started the sprint. That story that was later on added or even given the estimates will not show under committed. Why is that? Because the sprint have already started. Anything added after the sprint have already started will not reflect in this gray bar area. It will not reflect in this gray bar, gray bar, gray bar area. So it's very important for you to know this. That's why before your team starts the sprint, ensure that all the story points, estimate hours have already been imputed before you start it. If you wait, so you're like, oh, since we already have the story in the board, it's true. Sometimes we have the story in the board. Sometimes we already have the story in the sprint backlog. But if it's not estimated, despite the story being there and it's not estimated, it will not count here as part of the committed when the sprint started. Jira heavily use all this data by the numbers, not by the issue count. Very important to know this. It counts this by the numbers, not by the issue count, right? So anything else, let's say scope change, adjusting estimates, increasing estimates, all those things you added after the sprint have started will not show here. Instead, if you actually complete all those things that you added, it's gonna show higher estimates, which in some case you will see this a lot at work 
where the team will start at four in this case. Uh, we don't have that in this graph. Actually, it's not reflecting in this graph here. But sometimes you can see the team will start at 39. Then at the end of the sprint, they will have like up to 50. Like right, this green will be 50. But here will remain 39. So that's what was there when the sprint will hit start. But this green will go up to 50. If you see that, that means that they added to the sprint, an estimate was increased, or there was an issue already in, that we didn't have a story point, then after they gave it a story point, all those things that have been added will now reflect here. Right? You got it now? All right. So now, if this has been valuable, comment velocity. So if you comment velocity, this will help me know that it's actually valuable to you so I can continue doing more metrics video. So the green part is the total completed estimate when the sprint end. So you see, this is the total estimate when the sprint end. So when the sprint end, everything else you added or you adjusted, everything else will now reflect on the green. And then the question is, what is the true velocity, right? What is the true velocity? So sometimes you might start with one thing and you end with another thing. For that particular sprint, what will you ended with will now be that sprint velocity. In this case, for this sprint, they started with 39 and they ended with 39. So that's the 39 becomes that sprint velocity. So let's give an example of sprint 33. So sprint 33, the team committed to 43 story points, right? They had a huge goal of completing 43 story points. But by the end of this sprint, the team completed only 13 story points. So what is the velocity for this sprint? It's 13 for that sprint, right? So, and now looking at sprint 32, the team also committed for 36 story points in the beginning of the sprint when the hit starts, right? And at the end of this sprint, at the end of this sprint, the team completed 35. So for sprint 32, the team's velocity was 35, right? Always, always gonna go by what was end with. The end number that was actually completed, in this case, the green bar becomes that sprint velocity. But now let's talk about average velocity, right? Because those are two different things, right? The average velocity is you are looking back, just like what, what's the uh, JIRA defined in this case here, right? So the average velocity is us now looking back at past sprints completed right here. Past sprints completed story will divide those by the number of sprints to now get the team's average velocity. In our case, let's assume we want to take uh, this particular velocity, this particular data, and get this particular team's velocity, right? So if you want to do that, I always like to use the number at the bottom because it's easy, right? The graph uh, is difficult to do that from here. You have to like either hover over it and do that. But the easiest place to do that so you can be able to get this is just to come under the underneath the velocity and go under completed. So now, if I want to get the velocity for this particular team for looking back at past sprints that was done, I come under completed and I count all what was completed and I divide it by the number of sprints. In this case, how many sprints do we even have? Let me count, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And you can also count down here. You can also see the same, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So we have seven sprints, seven sprints in this case. And now I look at the completed part. So for sprint 29, they had 39 completed. So we're going to be calculating this together, right? So I rely on you all to calculate this with me. Tell me too at the, at the comments, what was your own before you get in my own? <laughs> so, so now to calculate this, we're going to add all the completed, right? All the completed. So in this case, I'm going to add 39 plus 47 plus 26 plus 30 plus 35 plus 13 plus 19. So if I add all of this computer in the past seven sprints, it comes up to 
209. So now that's all was completed in the past sprint. For me now to get the average, I have to now divide this by the number of sprints. And in this case, the number of the sprints is seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So now I'm gonna divide 209 divided by seven. So what did you get? You get 29.8571429. But then we know the rules, right? You round up, right? When anything above uh, five, you round up. So in this case, the team's velocity will now be 30, right? So the 29.8, I'm just going to round up the 29, so that will be 30. So this team, in average, they are able to roughly complete 30 story points. And then when you go to sprint planning as a scrum master, you can use that 30 as a baseline, but do not weaponize that 30. That 30 is just for you to have an idea that roughly the team can complete 30 story points. But also have in mind that there's a lot of other factors we have to consider when we are planning during the sprint. You know, you have to look at the availability of the team. You have to look at the holiday. You have to look at uh, the workload itself. You have to look at the complexity. You have to look at dependency. You have to look at risks. You have to look at all of that and factor all of that that will now determine if you're going to maintain 30 more, pick up more than 30 or below 30. But when does this 30 average velocity do not matter? Then ask you a question. When does this 30 is not valuable? Do you all know? When does this story do not val is not valuable? Tell me, there may be three or five or multiple different scenarios when this story is invalid that we can't even use it at all. Number one, the team dynamic change, right? The team dynamic change, then the story becomes invalid. Number two, the projects change. The scope, the scope of the projects change, right? Sometimes they might middle of thinking about, oh, this is not the customer might say that customer might say that, oh, we don't want this thing anymore. We change our mind. We want to go with different new application and future systems. So I want you guys to stop that and now let's start all new projects. When even though the team dynamic might remain the same, if the whole scope of the everything just change, then that theory might not be valuable. And you might be asking, Aisha, why is that? Why? Because the team will go back to forming. Because the whole change will affect the way how they will work. We also have to give them opportunity to expand, grow, and learn. Right? What are the reasons, too, why that story might not be valuable? Right? If they have new processes in place at work. Maybe you have new processes. You are moving from one way of estimation to another way of estimating then that theory will become invalid. Or you also have a new uh, a new uh, team members, right? Where half of the team is new and the other half is not. And you see that they need more trainings and stuff. And that's why you have to be flexible with the velocity. They might have to take on more to pick up for KTs and all of that. So that's why at all time, when you're a Scrum Master, you have to always critical thing. You don't just go look at the number and run with it. You always have to ask a lot of other questions behind the scene so that you know what is the best fit for your team. And this might change sprint to sprint, right? So at all time, you always, always be proactive and factor all other things. And also feedback you're getting from the team themselves, feedback from retros, don't underestimate all those feedbacks. All that can help your team overall grow and get you guys to high performing. If this has been valuable to you, follow Aisha Tech in all social media platforms and comment velocity and comment the number you got. Or if you have any question around this metric, tell me down in the comments. And if you have any metric, metric you want me to cover, comment down below. And do not forget to follow me on Aisha Tech on TikTok and Instagram because I would like to like, start going live on TikTok and Instagram. So follow me on there so we can go live, so we can be so close to each other where you can ask me all questions on there on live. Thank you all for watching Aisha Tech and I really, really appreciate all your help and thank you all for subscribing. Actually, it means so much to this channel. Our goal is to get to 10,000 subscribers in August. 
I really will appreciate if you guys share, like, and comment. See you all again in our next video.